The truth of the matter is that we have a petition in court. Yes, we do. And that is why we must not lose hope. 25% in Abuja is a must. It is compulsory. The and that is there that people are trying to turn up and down is just a congestion. It is a must. And that is why you have to just settle down and hear from this Anthony General of the Federation and as well a Minister of the State and hear how he also explained this because even he himself, he has explained it before. But some people are still paying deaf ear. Peter Obi is only one who has that 25% in Abuja. Like, you cannot be a president in Nigeria that you do not have the majority vote in Abuja. Then where are you going to sit? You must be known, you must be popular, and you must be loved in Abuja. Anyway, hear what he has to say. We have a petition and we have a case. On Peter Obi's petition, we stand. Let's not shake. We must get to the roots of this and the mandate of the people must be reclaimed. Guys, watch this video and share. The provision of Section 134 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended is unambiguous. In other words, very clear. It is settled law that where a provision of a statute is clear or unambiguous, it must be given its natural, ordinary, everyday meaning. The provision of Section 134 is expressed. It mentioned the votes cast at the election in each of at least two-thirds of all states in the Federation and the federal capital Abuja, meaning plus or including the federal capital territory Abuja. Well, we have joining us to put this in proper perspective, former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Michael Aondoka. Good to have you on Arise News. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Thank you very much well, there's for been... giving me the opportunity to be here again. Well, you're welcome. Now, there's been some controversy over the interpretation of Section 134 of the 1999 Constitution. Some legal scholars believe not having at least two-thirds of all states in the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory Abuja nullifies the presidential election results declared by INEC and will form the thrust, you know, of what happens at the election petition tribunal. What's your thoughts on that? Well, thank you very much. I have spoken so much about this and I wouldn't want to be personal. But I wish to draw the attention to the reading of a document, the requirement of a law. The Constitution is a document and for you to get the true intention of a particular provision of the Constitution, for instance, Section 134, Subsection 2, you have to read the entire Constitution in reference to other provisions of the Constitution. That is where you will get the true meaning. Today, I don't want to specifically talk about Section 134, Subsection 2, but to give you other background provisions that if you want to construe that provision, you must also have to look at them to give you what you are looking for. First, let's look at the Constitution itself, Section 1 uh, and 2. And Section 1 said Nigeria should be a federation consisting of the state and the federal capital. That is the beginning. Should be a federation consisting of states and federal capital. That and appeared there. If you go back to the sections, Section 3 of the Constitution, it went ahead to list the 36 states of the federation by name. From there up to Section 6 of the Constitution, you will discover that what is local government is specified, what is area council is specified, the area of the states are defined in the schedule, the area of the federal capital territory is defined in the schedule. So you will know that there's no mix up of what is federal capital or what is state. Because they are specifically special mentioned, and the rules of interpretation is that what is specifically mentioned in the constitution or in a document, what is not mentioned is excluded. So if you look at it, the states are well defined, their territorial area well defined, even their capitals are well defined. If you come to the issue of the federal local governments contained in all the states well defined, and then the constitution not pretend in federal capital to say they have a local government, say they have six area council, specifically defined in the second schedule of what is the federal capital. 
Then if you go back to section 133B of the Constitution, which deals with presidential election, which comes before section 134, you will see that a person who is a single candidate at the election is still stipulated to win 25% in two thirds of all the states and federal capital. And it goes to say that if somebody is not elected in accordance with the constitution, fresh nomination should be. That one has gone further, not talk of fresh election. It's a fresh nomination should be taken. That is how serious it is. If you marry that provisions, you'll be able to arrive at the true intention of section 134 subsection 2. You must look at section 133. Certain, because the person is just a single candidate, yet the stipulation says you must get to take of yes or no <coughs> in the 32, uh, two thirds of the 36 states of the federation and federal capital. And if he is not elected, in, in, there's no winner in, in, in accordance with the provisions of Section 133. Fresh nomination, not the election, fresh nomination should be conducted. That is the case of a single candidate. So when you come to 134, which deals with uh, uh, multiple candidates, two or more candidates, the procedure is almost the same. The ant came again. Where it being argued, maybe rightly or wrongly, that Section 299 makes the federal capital state. I am afraid where or something is specifically mentioned, where defined. I don't have. I don't think importation or that kind of interpretation may be appropriate. But that is still left to be resolved by the aspect code. But assuming you now look at that 299 and equate it, you will see the special nature of the federal character because there is also specified that the president should act as if he's a governor. And therefore, one may be tempted as uh, the federal capital is created, given a special nature. And uh, if you look at it literally, if he's deemed to be a governor, Section 176 of Section 2 of the requirements of winning two thirds will matter, must have applied. But here, the Constitution stipulated they should only be 25%. I thought that is the more uh, proper. Constitution to, uh, consideration because if you are saying it's a state, then the issue of requirement of winning to uh, the cap federal capital by two thirds as specified in the governorship relation will arise. But I don't think that's what is the import of the constitution. But so much has been said, has been repeated about this. I just drew the attention to the other sections of the constitution that can give more light because the interpretation rules say make reference to other relevant provisions of the constitution for clarity. And again, says you should read the whole documents as a whole. So, Section 299 appears to be more consonant with the administrative procedure, which gives the, the state, the federal capital, the power to the president as if it's a governor to administer the federal capital, and the National Assembly as if it's a House of Assembly to make laws for the federal capital. That is my understanding of it. But uh, it has generated so much, and it's in court. Uh, I'm afraid we'll see how what the judges will say. Definitely, we have to wait and see. But thank you so much for giving us your own interpretation. Now, talking about the presidential election petition court, they turned down the PDP's request for the live streaming of proceedings, saying the request is a new one and is not supported by any law in the country for now. However, confidence in the Nigerian judiciary is low at the moment, with some people believing that justice might not be served over the outcome you know, of the presidential election. As the former Attorney General of Nigeria, how would you reassure such skeptical minds that indeed justice will be served at the election petition tribunal? Thank you very much. My previous ap appearance on this television on the issue of the desirability I say it's highly desirable, but not practicable at this moment. And I, I gave my reasons, time, and it's a matter of policy. It's not a matter of law. The stipulation of law is that the tribunal should sit in a place that is completely accessible. But you see, we are moving to a society that is highly technologically advanced, our society is becoming internet-based, 
is highly desirable, but regrettably, it's a matter of policy. It is not within the judges presiding. It's not a legal matter. So that thing the judges felt that they don't want to go into issues that are not purely legal, but more administrative and more a matter of policy, not legal issues. So I think they were going in the right direction. Again, there's a problem in we had never had, it's not desirable to hear you can gauge the social media. But you see, things have happened in the country where things are twisted. And at this stage, I think the wisdom, there's more wisdom to say, let us allow the people who want to have access to the tribunal to have, but let us not tele televise. Because before you hear, people will start talking, body language expert will start talking. I saw this judge, I saw her frowning, I saw this. I think these are the turn of the things that must have created some kind of uh, problems for the judges. Since the applications were not rooted in law, then it becomes a big problem for them to swear. And if anything comes out, who authorized you to, to rule in favor? On which law did you do it? So. To me, I don't still see any doubt in the credibility of the judges. When hearing starts, most of the evidence being presented are documentary evidence. Most of the issues are issues of law. We was, at that time, we can know what is going on. But to this, at this age, I don't think the issue of uh, not televising should play so much important to lower or have effect on the credibility of the noble laws presiding. We should still give them the benefit of doubt. Well, thank you very much for that. Former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice,